In this lesson, we'll separate all the logo pieces that we broke apart in the last lesson onto different layers here in Illustrator so that when we import our logos to After Effects, our layers will show up there as well. Okay, so I have my layers panel open. You want to make sure that you've got that. Um, and I'm even going to go so far as to tear it off and pull it up a little bit higher and open this up so we can see all of our layers. Now, here's something to think about. Whenever you go into After Effects, you have all your layers on your timeline. Well, Illustrator has its layers as well, and it also has subsets within its layer, uh, which are paths. So for us to get our paths that we broke apart from our logo onto different layers in After Effects, we need to place them on their own layers here in Illustrator. So it's actually pretty simple to do. We know we want um, control over all these pieces we broke up. So that means we would need seven layers for this little part of our flower. So I'll just make seven new layers, just coming down here to create a new layer. And we'll just grab those pieces and drop them into the layers. So we're grabbing those paths and just dropping them onto the new layers that we created. And it doesn't change anything of the way it looks here in Illustrator. It's just changing the organization, but it's going to make a huge difference when we get it into After Effects. So let's select that layer eight and it looks like that's flower bud one. So I'm going to left double click on that where it says layer eight and let's change this to flower bud one or you could even abbreviate it to FB one which is probably faster once we get it into After Effects okay this one is going to be flower stem one so we'll call this FS one this one is going to be our leaves, so I'll just call that leaves. That's fine. This one's going to be flower stem two and flower stem three. And then we've got flower bud two. And that one doesn't have a path in it. So let's grab our path, drop it into layer two. And that's going to be flower bud three. And if you want to check and see what was actually in there, you can just toggle those down and see if it has a path or not. Okay, so now that those have all been renamed, let's also get those into a better order here. So let's have all the buds at the top. So we've got uh, FB1, FB2, FB3, then we'll go with our stems, FS1, FS2, FS3, and then the leaves. Now, one other thing you need to know is that really, I mean, not just this piece here needs to be on its own layer, but if we want individual control over our words here, for example, we actually need to have a separate layer for every single letter. Now, if you have an actual piece of text that you type in After Effects, which isn't really probably going to exactly match your logo, but then you can start to use those effects and presets. Um, but if you just have a text layer that's not outlines, let's say, you know, I'll just left click and type something in there just like that. You can see this is a text layer while these are outlines because you can see how this has a line underneath it and these have been outlined. So you would want to convert something that had just been typed out as text, if that was part of your logo, to outlines first. Now this already has been converted to outlines, but if I want this to be converted to outlines, I can just right click and choose create outlines. Now you can see how the outside looks the same. Now I don't actually need this. That's just to show you that if you encounter that while you're creating or get, preparing your file for After Effects, that's what you need to do. Now for the rest of these, I already have them created as outlines, but they're not on e an individual layer per letter. So let's do that. We need to ungroup it first because that is set up as a group. So we'll hit Control Shift G to ungroup and you can see how all those paths were revealed. So let's add a layer for each letter. So T-H-E-P-O-P-P-Y-S-H-O-P. -P -P -P. And then I'll just come down through here 
and we'll just start dropping those in. And you can see how um, me naming those earlier helps not to just have quite so many to have to deal with. So I can just drop them in. And Illustrator goes, does a good job of color coding things too, which also helps to kind of keep you straight for exactly where you're at in the process. Okay, so we'll just drop the last few letters onto their own paths. And what ends up happening is if you make the right number of layers, this um, path here for the circle in the background can go on that, just stay on that original layer. So we can just rename that one green dot background. And then we need to go through and order our letters. And also we want to um, name them. So let's go ahead and I'll just do this probably the easiest way by selecting. Okay, so I wanna put that at the top um, of all of the letters and we'll just call that T. Okay, then we'll find our H, which is gonna be this one right here. You can tell by that little um, indicated the selected artwork. We'll pull that up, call that H, and grab your E. Now, it doesn't really matter what the color coding is here in Illustrator. That's not going to come across to After Effects. But if you want to change the coloring, you can simply uh, tr uh, double click there and then come in here and just change the color to something else. And then you can see now I don't have two black layers right next to each other, just just to keep it a little bit more organized. Okay, so that one's gonna go up next. That'll be our P. And this becomes especially helpful when you have duplicate letters. So I'm gonna have three Ps, but because I've ordered them, you can always be able to tell which one is which because of where it falls in the word and where it is in the hierarchy here. Okay, so we've just got a few left. And you can also select by clicking this little target here if you don't wanna go all the way back over onto your artboard. It's so far, sometimes your hand just might get tired. Um, okay, so that's gonna be the P and that's gonna be your H. And then we can just pull that up into place. S-H-O-P. Okay, so that looks great. And now you are ready to import this to After Effects and all of these beautiful layers are going to come through. The only other thing you probably wanna pay attention to is your artboard. Now my artboard is already the size of this circle, but let's say maybe it was more something like this. I just came over there and I grabbed my artboard tool to change the size, um, which is this right here. And then you can just begin drawing artboards. Now, if you want your artboard to be the, an, a very exact size based on something you see here, you can just click the shape. So if I just left click right on that circle, it's gonna make me an artboard perfectly fitted to that. So that can be really helpful whenever you're wanting to know, you know, how big should I make this artboard? Is it gonna have something to do with the center point? Maybe, so that's really, really helpful. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll get these logos imported to After Effects.